Well, when we designed this uh, standard T-square fence for aluminum extrusions, uh, the very super cool tools fence, we designed it to fit a 3 by 2 guide rail. This is our standard, uh, our standard fence. And if the top of the tubing is 3 inches, this thing just works with no, no problem whatsoever. But one manufacturer that we've had uh, calls from from our customers is Powermatic, where for some reason their tubing that they have gone with is a non-standard size. It's, it, sometimes it's a sixteenth of an inch over. And so that means that the fence just fits very tight on here and there isn't enough, uh, you know, even with the spring steel all the way disengaged, it, the whole mechanism is just too tight. But the good news is that there's a really, really easy fix for it. So when Jeff and I designed this, uh, this setup to go into production, we designed it with very substantial glides. And uh, so we, we, not only did we want to make sure that they were going to last a long time, this UHMW is just amazing stuff, but we also realized that in the event that there was someone who had uh, tubing uh, slightly oversized over the standard three inches, that all you'd have to do is take a micro pass you know, so you're talking about taking a 30 second off of here and a 30 second off of th this, a 30 second off of these two pads and a 30 second off of the the uh, the flapper pad to be able to uh, take get that sixteenth of an inch back. And several people have done it, and they said, "Oh, I took too much off." But then they but then they forget that they they can still actuate the spring steel here to bring it out. But I want to show you a really simple method. So. Uh, you're, you're going to be able to just fix this right away, but the, the key thing is is you don't want to cut too much off. You can't sand this UHMW, it just doesn't sand right. It's, that, it's designed to resist abrasion and since sanding is an abrasive process, this stuff is designed to be machined or cut and it cuts like a dream if you have the right setup. Now the problem is is that it cuts too easily with a sharp block plane and so I want to show you how to how to do it in a real controlled uniform manner to where you're not going to take too much off but always what I would recommend you do is to, to do this setup take a little bit off of the flapper pad first before you even mess with these and then pop it back on and then check to see if it if that is enough uh, uh, if you've given it enough play for it to uh, actuate comfortably on there but if not you do a little bit on the, the flapper first and then you do a little bit on each one of these pads and like I said for, power, for Powermatic it ends up being 3 and a 16th and so you're talking a 32nd and a 32nd and you're, you've, you're back to, uh, you're back to uh, you know, right at 3 inches then. But we made these glides very substantial and you'll see that Taking a 30 second off of an inch off of this is not going to affect your performance at all, or even a little bit more if you had to. But steel can vary, and I, I just don't know why Powermatic seems to be the manufacturer that, that has such a consistently oversized. And, uh, you know, because it really doesn't have anything to do with any kind of, uh, you know, metric. It would be, the closest thing would be uh, an, an 80 millimeter, and that's, that's quite a bit more than, than three. So... I don't really know, you know, what their specs are or why they're doing it, but I'm going to tell you we got a really great simple solution for you. So let me show you how to do it. Well, if you're like me, you save uh, strips of wood. I save all kinds of thin strips from that are drops off of the table saw, and uh, so I have a whole selection of, of things. I think this piece of Wenge is going to be the ticket for what we're going to do today. And all you have to do is you just have to take, um, you know, this is just a standard combination square. So I know that this is one inch. And our glides that, we, that we've had made, these are, these are the glides. These are exactly uh, one inch on center. So all you have to do is, is take your ruler and uh, a marking knife and just mark yourself two lines on a, on a scrap board. Inch, so these are one inch on centers now. So all I've got to do is drill a quarter inch, two quarter inch holes, and this is going to pop right down in there and give me a, a way to, to work and support this. This is just a, a scrap piece off of my drill press. Okay, let me just drill these guys out. Like I said, this is just a piece of scrap, and uh, here are my two lines. They may be a little bit hard for you to see. You know, you, you want to 
The depth is not really important. You just want to make sure that it's uh, deep enough that, that the little stub tenons on the glide are going to go all the way in. And since that's so sharp, I don't want to, I don't want to booger up my, uh, that sharp edge of that, that uh, UHMW, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take a whisper, a whisper touch with a, with a, uh, you know, to bevel it and chamfer that edge, so it just pops in there real nice. Countersink. That's what I was trying to think of. It's been a long day. Okay, well here's my here are my two holes, and you know you can see that this UHMW, this stuff, the, the reason this stuff is is not good for uh, like table saw fences that a lot of people make table saw fences it out of is that it won't behave. It doesn't stay flat, so you end up trying to have table saw facing elements, and it's just not not good. It, it really works great in these little sections like what we're using it for, where the flatness is not as critical, especially if it's getting pulled straight away. That looks really good. I'm going to put a clamp on this for a second while I'm, while I'm getting the rest of my setup going so I can just make sure that I'm going to pull this, this guy nice and, nice and flat before I cut on it. So I think I'm going to use this piece of Wenge. So I just want to, I want to just cut a little section off of here just to, so I can have two pieces to work with. And that's probably been that's probably been laying flat long enough. So now I've got my now I've got this in here, and I can feel that's about a 30 second lower. And here's my block plane, so I can come in here and know that I'm not going to cut I'm not going to cut beyond that wenge. So if I if I hit the wenge, I'm going too far. But look how beautiful this cuts. I mean that is that's just a perfect perfect shaving. So you can just you can just clean this up really quickly. And like I said, do the flapper first and make sure that the uh, that you haven't taken too much off. But you know, that's a perfect shaving of UHMW right there. Look at that. That's some tough stuff. <sighs> But that's all there is to it. And then when you're done, you know, just use a pocket knife to, to carefully peel it out, or a putty knife. So you've take, you, now you've just taken a few passes off of this. You know, I've taken it down to where it's even, even thickness with this. And uh, it just took me just, to, it took me more time to drill two holes and get it set up and get this ready and and I promise you this will not wear away that little bit that you're taking taking away is not going to take away from the life of your your glide this stuff is incredible how resistant it is to to abrasion that's why you can't sand it it has to be cut it has to be cut with a with a sharp tool like a block plane